I've used um, a 3D print for the center of my diapo, but obviously if you haven't got a 3D printer or you're not lucky enough to have access to it, you could chop up an old chopping board uh, into a T and, and, and use that um, if instead, you know? So I'm gonna set my, my diapo up on my uh, T, diapo T. Sorted. Right, all we've got to do now is uh, string it up and uh, go for it. So for the sake of this experiment, we have a five meter fishing pole, okay, and mounted approximately four and a bit meters up is the center of our uh, diapo for 14 megahertz. Uh, I've got a simple length of coax running down to a BL259 here. It's uh, RG58, nothing special, just a patch leader. And you can see that I have basically uh, strung out the, the two elements, not particularly fantastically, uh, at roughly 120 degrees. Okay. Now, these have not been cut. They're both exactly five meters long. And I just want to SWR it now, to see where we're at. I reckon it's going to be around 13, 13,900, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think I'm going to need to cut them. But, uh, okay. And the reason I'm going to need to cut them is because they're at an angle close to the ground. They stop at around six foot either side. Um, so anyway, let's, let's put the SWR meter on it. I think it's about minus 30 out here today. Oh, well. So it's uh, pretty close, isn't it? Let's see if I can get a bit of a better. Doing this with one hand is very difficult. Bear with me. So there we are, it's spot on um, resonance at 13.549. So I will need to chop a, probably an inch off each end. So let's do that and come back to it. Okay, now I've SWR'd it so that at 14.200, I know it's 201, the SWR is 1.4, okay? 1.4 to 1 at 14.200. Um, now, I, I can get it lower, but I don't want to, because I want to show you something that uh, a lot of people um, don't quite understand. And that's something called coax locks. So on a very short length of coax, the diapo is showing 1.4. Now bear with me. Okay, so here you are. That's with a 15 meter length of coax. Right, it's dropped. Um, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, SWR points. Um, Anyway, let me show you why. To be fair, not all coax will lose um, a third of its power over 20 or 30 meters. Um, the RG58 
which is what I'm using for this, is um, not a particularly good quality RG58. Um, but many times I've heard um, on the radio people say, since I've changed my coax, the SWR is a lot worse. Well, it's actually probably because the coax is more efficient and the aerial needs retuning. It's not necessarily because the coax is bad, although you may have a bad joint. But that's probably the reason. It's more likely because the coax that you have now fitted is less lossy and therefore works a lot better than the coax that you replaced. So what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'll get round to saying is, um, the SWR is better back at the radio because if your aerial is returning let's say two watts, by the time it reaches the radio, because of the loss of the coax, you're down to half a watt, or maybe one watt, uh, which is obviously going to be a better uh, SWR than at the aerial. Have I laboured that point enough? Did you see what I'm trying to get at? Okay, so SWR is measured at the radio, but please be aware it's also a good idea to measure it at the aerial. The end's finally trimmed. I've cut about, um, I suppose, 10 centimetres off each end in the end. Um, and this is the first reading. I've not done this previous. So there we go. At 14, 100, we have one to one. Go down, go down, go down. So 1.2 just below the band, and 1.1, 1 1.2 at 200, no, 1.3 at 200, 1.4 at 250, 1.5 at 300, and oh, way too high. and 1.6 at 350. Now keep those figures in mind because um, with loss on the coax cable we're going to re-measure it at the transceiver. So here we go uh, we're now connected to the end of 25 meters of RG58 and now the same readings only this time in reverse. So where we were 1.7, I think, might have been slightly less. We are now 1.3 at uh, 250, we're 1.2, 200, we're 1.1, as you can see. Zero SWR. down past the band and it starts coming back up again at uh, 13,900 so that's the effect of loss in cable uh, in this particular instance is actually uh, beneficial because it means we can use the whole of the band uh, without any fear Okay, so at the moment, this is the shape of our antenna. We have it as an inverted V. Now, from above, the radiation pattern is a bit like this. Okay, where there's the aerial, where most of the the, the RF, if you like, is being thrown in this direction and in that direction because of the fact that it's sloping. So the RF is being pushed off the, the elements 
in that direction. Okay. Now with the flat, diapo, the above pattern is literally a circle, you know, two circles. It's a figure of eight, perfect figure of eight, because most of it's going skyward and earthward. And if you look at the pattern from the ends, okay, you get this. So nothing's coming towards you. Absolutely nothing's coming on. So you've got a null on, on the end of, of the diapo. Okay, because if you look at it, um, I use the pen, for instance, right? So this is what the, um, the RF sees when it's coming to the side of the antenna. And as it's coming to the end of the antenna, all it's got is the end of the cable. But with an inverted V, it can see from the side, from end on, it still sees a lot of the aerial. So the benefit of an inverted V is the fact that it becomes not omnidirectional, but it becomes um, less directional than a flat top. So the RF can be seen from the side but it also transmits further from the direction of the antenna. And as the far plot will show that there's more of a push towards the direction of the um, elements than there is with a flat top. Okay, a little bit to uh, there's a lot more physics and science involved in that, obviously, but uh, we haven't got the time or the scope to do it in this particular video. Um, but another thing to, to um, observe, sorry about the pausing, is that there's going to be a difference in impedance as well. The impedance changes because of the capacitive load between the elements and the ground, okay, changes. Now, the higher up uh, to a certain point, that is, that the antenna is um, from, the, from the earth, um, the longer the elements require to be. Um, and now with the inverted V, because you're pulling the elements down, they need to be shorter. Um, there is, a, I'm sure, some wonderful formula that uh, proves this, but uh, just do it um, and, you, and you'll be able to measure it yourself. You'll actually physically um, see the difference. Um, now with mine, it's only uh, five meters above the ground and the ends are only two meters above the ground. So I had to, to chop um, quite a bit off the end of the uh, the elements, 10 centimeters. Um, and that still didn't bring it into the middle of the band, only the beginning of the uh, 14 megahertz, 20 meter band. Um, but when I flattened the antenna, which I shall show you in a minute, the SWR moved up the band into the middle of the 20 megahertz, uh, sorry, the 20 meter band, the 14 megahertz band. Um, however, would not come below uh, 1.2 anyway. So conclusions, how do we end this video? Um, an inverted V, um, from at least from my point of view, is the way to go. Uh, it allows me to, uh, to have uh, the dipole more as a as an omnidirectional, um, the SWR is lower because the impedance matches better. The flat uh, diapo is um, good. Um, it's uh, around 73 ohms um, when uh, when matched. Um, so you'd need perhaps a ballon to bring it in. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. I, I uh, you have to build it, play with it yourself, see what you think. Um, from my point of view, it's the the inverted V all the way. Um, 
Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. If you do, please give it a thumbs up um, and perhaps subscribe. Um, and if you didn't, well, that one works as well, unfortunately. Um, so thank you very much again for watching um, and uh, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll do another one very soon. Bye for now. Mike Zero, Mike Sierra, November. Zero. Mike Zero, Mike Sierra, November. Zero, Mike Sierra, November, 5-9. Five, 5-9 nine. Five, nine also. Italy, Victoria, 3.